Hi folks and welcome to another video. We're going to be using the booth today, the inflatable spray booth. We're going to try and get it out in the drive here. Jimmy's been working on the car out here and we really want to put it in the booth. It's a little bit windy out here and the weather's a little bit unpredictable. So we're going to get the booth out, get this car in it and let's start work on it in the booth for the first time, a full car. Right, this is the car in question folks. Jimmy had to do some uh, repair work to this uh, wing corner section here. That's all been done now, it's all been sanded down, it's all been prepared. So. Uh, that's what we're doing now. We're going to get the booth out now. So hopefully we'll have enough room to get it in the drive here and uh, get it up. So I'm going to put you on a bit of time lapse for that, folks. So I'll see you in a second. Right, it's up now, folks. Now, we didn't actually peg it down. We should have probably pegged it down. As you can see, it was sort of folding its way like that because there was no support at the bottom, basically. But um, anyway, it's up now. And uh, Jimmy's just putting the car in now. That's it. Yeah, so just as we're uh, doing work on just this side, we'll um, just move the car right over. This is a standard sort of little hatchback car, I suppose. And uh, as you can see, we've got enough room to get around the car in here. No worries about the ground sheet, folks, as you can see there. It's uh, on gravel, I know, but people were saying they was worried about this uh, ripping, but it's basically just a ground sheet at the end of the day, and uh, that's it. So the booth's up, as you can see, the car's in here now. We've got a little mini compressor, which we use for out the front here, so we're just going to get set up. We'll do that zip back up against. we just got it laying down at the moment. That zips all the way around there, and then the, that's the car sealed in, folks. Right, that's it folks, that's the uh, booth, car in the booth. We've got a little compressor here. Again, that's just a little uh, Airmaster 50 litre compressor. Just got the hose sneaking in through the corner there. I've pulled that down for the filter side so that we get the uh, airflow coming out there. I could actually peg it down, as you know, we normally peg it down at the base there, all the way around first, so that's the way we should have really done it. The trouble with that is we've got a concrete base underneath this, so. Um, Probably wouldn't get it in but you can pick it up from higher up as well and I could have perhaps lashed it to this wall here or even the sandbags that these come with they do come with some sandbags which you can hold it down with as well as you can see Jim is now using the rear entrance there you don't really need these on anymore to be honest with you, you can take them off now there we go get rid of them that just allows full fresh air to enter the booth There we go so yeah when you come in just keep this one shut and that way the only fresh air coming is through there and then goes into the booth that way as i've mentioned before make sure that the air lines are straight when they go in if they're kinked in any way you won't get full airflow and it won't keep it inflated to the correct pressure one other thing to note here as well folks is that we've got a compressor a little mini compressor they can take quite a, a load on your uh, your electricity lead whatever lead you've got coming out here so what, what we've actually done the compressor extension lead is fed from another socket in the house and the two pumps for the inflation of the booth are fed on another socket in the house on another ring main so just to let you know that we haven't put everything on one socket otherwise you could trip the breaker out and then this would start to deflate so that's something you, which you obviously want to try and avoid don't put your compressor and your pumps on the same outlet basically that's what i'm trying to say there right so we're in the booth now and all i can say is that before we used to have to sort of paint cars on the drive and you've got wind you've got dust you've got everything bugs flying in the air this is such a nice environment now to paint in so if you've got if you do sort of work on your cars outside as we do normally uh, something like this is ideal and i think they've actually gone down in price again so do check out the vivor website 
I'll leave the links in the description below for this actual one which we got here. You can buy different sizes. This is, uh, I think it's a 13 foot by so I can't remember what it is exactly, but uh, I've, I've, I've left the description below of what it is. So yeah, there we go. So Jim is getting ready to paint now. We'll try and watch him while he does it. And uh, happy day. So all the cars have been prepared. So we're going to be applying a water-based base coat, which Jimmy's already had mixed up, which we're going to be applying to the the, uh, the bumper in question. And after that, we're going to be going on top with a 2 k lacquer. Right, so we've just masked the whole car up now, folks. Very important to do that because there's going to be a lot of overspray in here and it's in a confined area, so you don't want to be getting sort of lacquer or any sort of paint on any of the rest of the car, even though it's supposed to be sucking it out. And unfortunately, we haven't got our clear sheets, what we normally have, so we just had to go along and use the paper to go all, literally all the way around the car, as you can see, to make sure everything's covered up. So just a little final bit of prep, folks, just where we've gone through to bare plastic. We're just putting some uh, primer over them areas so it uh, don't cause any reaction at all. Just let that flash off and then we'll be ready for the uh, base coat in this area here. Folks, we've all tack ragged down, we're all cleaned off now. We've got our marks, Jimmy's just got to get his mask and then we'll start the, uh, the base coat. So, see you in a second. Right folks, so we've had the heat lamp on this drying as well. So it's had two coats of uh, base, eh? Three. It's had three coats of base coat on it folks, and Jim has now got to do a, was it a pearl coat? Pearlescent drop, yeah. coat on the top of this as well. It's a three stage pearl uh, paint he's using here. So that's where we're going now folks. Right folks, so he's just put the uh, last of the pearl coats on and that one he done from a distance and just sort of dusted it on halfway up to the wing. Because what he actually did, he uh, scotch bright padded the whole of that wing to take the lacquer, to give a key to the lacquer. But he's only painted sort of into the wing a little bit, so he didn't need to paint the old wing, but he will lacquer the whole wing now as a result of that. So that's the procedure. Just waiting for the paint to flash off now to do that. And a lot I will say is it's working in there is so much more uh, better than working out in the open which we do now you can see it's quite windy out here look at the trees look you can actually see the trees blowing about there and uh, it's really hard work spraying in with that sort of wind going on but as i say one thing we have learned is that this will need tying down just to be in the safeguard so we have got the sandbags which we can attach to the cords and just lay them down there we'll be doing that the next time Right folks, he's already put two coats of lacquer on, he's now going to do the final coat.
Right, well there you go folks, that's a real life scenario of using one of these spray booths at home. I know I've got a drive which I'm handy to have, but you might have a bit of land or a bit of workshop or something which you want to put one of these up in. It just gives you a nice clean environment. Or if you don't want a full size one, and you only want to back a car in or drive a car in halfway, they do them half the size of this, so they're a lot easier to put up and store away obviously. So uh, yeah, there you go, another spray booth video for you folks. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Don't forget to check out the playlist on the spray booth video. I'll show you us putting it up. I'll show you us deflating it and rolling it up. It's a learning curve for us as well at the end of the day. We're getting better and better with packing it away. And we're going to get a little storage container, like a, a plastic bin, what you put logs in normally. You can buy them from your, your super stores and stuff. And uh, we'll be storing it in that just to keep it weatherproof as well. Anyway, don't forget, check out my other videos as well. Also, hit the subscribe button if you do like what we do on this channel. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. It's free to subscribe if you're YouTube, if you've got a YouTube account. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.